pick up where I left off. Um, you'll remember that I talked to you about the mystery of scientists trying to figure out what this new virus is and where it fits in the virus family tree. But today I want to talk to you about how the virus actually works. What does it do? Why is it so nasty? Why is it like wreaking havoc, havoc all over the globe? And so let's get started. In the last episode, I explained to you that viruses don't have their own Xerox machines. They're only little dollops of genetic material. In this case, um, it's got RNA, ribonucleic acid. It's a kind of genetic material, right? And it's surrounded by a protein coat. And it's got spikes. So what it does is it gets into your body, either, let's say, through the nose. Let's say you inhale it. That's step number one. It's in. It's in. And so it's looking around your body. It's looking around like, okay, and it attaches itself immediately to a cell in your lung, let's say. Now, those spikes, they're little hands. Think of them as little hands. That's what they grab on to the cell with. Have you ever seen a kid at, at Christmas time or Hanukkah opening up a package, ripping into the big package? Just the hands are all over the place. Well, this virus has a lot of hands, a lot of little hands, grabby little hands, and they grab onto a cell. That's one of the first things they do. And then they break in to the cell itself. So that would be like, you know, uh, a terrorist getting into the airport. That's like getting into your body. Right? And then they get on board an airplane. That's like the virus getting into your cell. But it doesn't stop there. When it gets into your cell, it busts open like a pinata, or better yet, like a Trojan horse. And the genetic material inside this little war machine, this little Trojan horse, pinata, whatever you want to call it, just it opens up and it scatters its viral genes all over the inside of your cell. But it doesn't stop there, because those genes, they're programmed. Remember, they don't, they're not living and they're, they don't have intelligence, but they're programmed. They're genetically programmed to do this. It's, it's brilliant on their part. Those little scattered genes now, viral genes, they break into the nucleus, the inner sanctum of your cell, which houses your DNA. That's the precious material that makes you you. That's your recipe. And it's really good at duplicating itself. That's your Xerox machine. And so when those viral genes break into that nucleus, they hijack it. They hijack the DNA and they use it as a Xerox machine to start making many more, many more of these viral genes. And then those viral genes re-enter the cell. They you know, come out of the nucleus, re-enter the cell. And think of it now as a factory, a retooled factory. You know, right now, some of our factories are retooling to make masks and face shields and, and ventilators and all the rest. Well, ironically, this virus is doing the same thing to your cell if you're infected. It's now retooling the machinery of your cell, which is normally in the business of replicating you. But now this little terrorist hijacker war machine is retooling the, the machinery of your cell to make duplicates of itself, like Ikea, literally, piecing together parts making viruses more and more the virion remember the the whole part the whole viral particle is called a virion so it's making virions like crazy just churning them out piecing them together like a ikea furniture and then and then this is what's interesting then they bust out of your cell and as they bust out of your cell to go infect another day another cell to duplicate even more they coat themselves on their way out. They coat themselves with some of the lipids or the fatty, wax, the fatty, waxy coating of your cell. They cloak themselves as they go out. Why? Because it makes that easier, we think, for them now to infiltrate the next cell and the next cell and the next cell. So you, and it's multiplying because each one of these mani newly manufactured viruses, vi virions, are going out and infecting new cells, which are infecting new cells and infecting new cells. That's why it's viral inside an infected body. 
that's how it does its thing. Like I said, you know, it's nasty business and people are dying. It's horrible. But you got to understand the brilliance of these little nasty war machines. Brilliant. They don't have their own Xerox machine. They don't have their own little factories. So they just hijack our machinery. And it works for them. Okay. So just going to wind this down with a couple of little, I think, interesting nuggets for you. And that is this. Look. Yesterday, um, the Scripps Institute made a big announcement. They, they think they may have found an Achilles heel to this little war machine. This is a nasty little war machine. Like I said, this is the pandemic. This is not just a pandemic. This is a pandemic. They took an antibody from the survivor uh, of, so of somebody who survived the SARS virus from back in uh, 2002. So they took an antibody, a kind of a little defender, right? And they tested it out on this new one, on this SARS-CoV-2. And lo and behold, it did glom on to that, the new virus at a pretty much the same place that it glommed on to the SARS and defeated the SARS. Don't get too excited. This is very preliminary. And it doesn't attach itself as strongly as it did to the SARS. But scientists are hopeful and Scripps is really good at this kind of stuff. They've made a, a worldwide reputation for themselves dealing with these kinds of viral uh, diseases. And But we're thinking, okay, maybe this is an Achilles heel of this little nasty war machine. So stay tuned. I'll keep you posted on what's going on there. Okay. Finally, while we're waiting for the scientists to come up with a way to defeat this war machine, and now that we know what we're dealing with, right, um, there, there are things you and I can do. You've heard about it in the news by now, right? Okay, self-quarantine. Why? You don't want this virus to even get into the airport. You do not want this virus even to get into your body, never mind your cell and the nucleus of your cell. So the first line of defense, don't let it into the airport. Don't let it into your body. How do you do that? Quarantine yourself. It sounds simple, but it is really the first line of defense. Man, take it seriously. Okay, second. You can, um, if you have to go out, keep your distance. I was at Walmart the other day. People are pretty good. They're keeping their distance here. In North Texas, all right. Texas is a smart state. Um, then you can also spend a lot of back and forth among scientists: mask, no mask, mask, no. Is it do more harm than good? Blah. Finally, yesterday they dropped the other shoe. The scientists again. This is science in action, folks. Don't criticize them for one day thinking no masks, then the next day masks. Science is an evolving thing. Science will change its mind constantly because it's always processing new data that is coming in every day. Don't turn it into anything else than that. So now yesterday, uh, the U.S. government at least announced, yeah, if you're going to go out, wear a mask, not a surgical grade mask, just a simple mask, or if you want to just put a scarf, the CDC has guidelines. You can check on that. Okay, again, it's in this case, it's not because you're worried about getting it in necessarily, although it helps for that. It's that we're, we're finding out as there are a lot of people out there who have the virus in them doing their thing, you know, Xeroxing, Ikea furniture thing. And you can exhale that on somebody by accident or sneeze. Sneezing is like a rocket ship for these viruses. You know, they're like, wow, the guy's going to sneeze. <laughs> let's let's hop on board and hatch you and there they go spaceship boom and some guy at MIT frightened everybody freaked everybody out but he's because he found in a control study that if you have a really strong sneeze this thing can go propel itself to like 27 feet don't worry about it six feet is good so you put a scarf in order to if you are one of these infected people you don't want to infect somebody else you don't want to exhale that okay fine so you can do that. You can also use, you know, disinfectants like Lysol to clean off surfaces. Um, but here's the thing, and, and hand sanitizer is a big deal. 
six make sure it's 60 percent alcohol but here's the thing low tech folks low tech soap ordinary soap sodium laureth sulfate that's the sudsing agent the the surfactant it's the thing that suds up when you when you wash your hands okay that chemical is very good at washing not only just washing away the virus no let me show you <laughs> this is very cool this is how i'm going to finish okay i'm going to finish with a bang <laughs> this uh sodium laureth sulfate the sudsing agent that is uh very common in soaps okay it is it, it's a kind of molecule that we call now don't get scared away it's amphiphilic what do i mean by that amphiphilic it means that if you look at the molecule uh, on one end, it's 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 hydrophilic, which means it loves water. And on the other end is what's called lipophilic. It loves fat, fatty, waxy things, right? Well, what did I just tell you? The viruses have this little fatty coat. So what happens when you suds up part of this molecule this sodium laureth sulfate attaches itself to the water the other one attaches the other end attaches itself to the virus that may be on your hands or on your face and it literally pulls a sucker apart piece by piece just yanks it and and, and so and then it gets washed away so you're not just washing away viruses when you soap up you are literally destroying it piece by piece. remember those little grabby fingers that i was talking to the kids at the christmas and hunt well that's what this this amphiphilic soap molecule does to the virus and then it just washes it away so 20 seconds don't cheat because it takes that long to dismantle the virus that's why you're not just washing the virus away you're dismantling it and you need about uh 20 seconds all right that's it that's it for now more to come lots more to come hope you're enjoying i hope you're Enjoying is not the right word. I hope these are informing you because I feel like knowledge is the is is a big weapon against stuff like this. So what do they say? Forewarned is forearmed. Um, I I just feel like information is important at a time like this because there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I just want you to be really well informed. Plus, I just like staying connected with you. So stay safe. Stay strong and stay positive.